name is Ben Bradley. I'm going to be 90 in 10 days. And um, I feel great. I don't, uh, uh, you know, I don't do fancy running and jumping and all that stuff the way I used to do. But uh, I have a much younger wife, 20 years younger than I. And I have, uh, I have a 60-year-old son and a 28-year-old son. And uh, just take a look at this garden. It's not bad. No, I mean, well, you have a very, you have a very nice, a very nice house. This is actually Grey Gardens. This is a, a very famous house. But Ben, well, I want to talk about a couple of things. Number one, you're part of, you're a part of the American landscape. There's no question. I mean, you can be humble about it, but you are. You're describing the landscape. Okay. Uh, you are a part of the American landscape, and you, you know, you were always that hot editor at the at the Washington Post and you still, I mean, I just, for everyone out there, I've never seen a 90 year old, I'm just going to sort of be obnoxious, look at Ben Bradley ladies and gentlemen, I mean, Ben Bradley, 90 years old, I saw your abs a minute ago, you're out by the pool, you're, you're phenomenal, I mean, no, you, I mean, I'm not, I'm not just fawning over you, but you really are, what, I'm fawning over you, okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm fawning over him, but, but he, he deserves it, how, how can you be, how is this the face of 90, what do you, what well, you, I mean, I'm, I've got a, I've got a, a, a very, very good life. I've got, a, I've got, I'm a, still, I still go to the Washington Post. I have a little office at the Washington Post, and I go there every day. I'm in Washington, and uh, or I don't if I don't want to. But uh, I'm kind. I, my job has been described there as a stop on the tour. Uh, I'm mean, being people uh, show up. I think when Don Graham, who is the owner of the, you know, has got some visiting uh, prime minister from somewhere and he's bored with him, uh, they'll bring him over and dump him on in me and we can sit and talk. And uh, I have a great, huge bulletin board. It's got, uh, it's like a scrapbook. It's uh, filled with interesting people and uh, if the conversation lags, I can always get up and start so you go to work every day. So you're, well, you're I still go to work every yeah, but I don't bust my ankles to get there. I mean, I I get there at uh, uh, and if I miss a Monday or miss a Friday, there's no tears. Well, at you're all. not running the paper anymore. No, so I have I, nothing to do. With but you did that for how long? How long did you run that paper? Thirty years. Thirty years. And I uh, then I uh, but um, but you think but the work because a lot of people at your age and this is what I've found in some of my research people which is an ugly word to me, retire. And I think, how do you, and I think that well, makes people what, older. What, what, what would you do if you retired? You go home and you sit there and uh, are a pain in the neck to your wife. Uh, and uh, you, she doesn't want you around and you don't want to be around. So I go to the office. You go out to lunch? I go out to some, I am, uh, often go down to the cafeteria, but I sweep through the newsroom to see if there's anybody that, it's got nothing to do. Uh, so, you know, I got a handful of uh, my contemporaries are still there. Walter Pinkus, 74 years old, is still there. One of the great reporters of, the, of his day. And uh, uh, if, if I go down alone, I'm, I'm inevitably joined by, by uh, people, and that's great. And I, I, oh, I would join you if you were alone. And I pick up a lot of skinny. I mean, I'm reasonably well informed for a man my age. You're extremely well informed. Let me ask you a question. A life without regret. I find a lot of people who are older, who are unhappy, or the kind of people you don't want to be around, are full of regret. And I... That's a tough one. I mean, it sounds like you're bragging life without regret. Here's a guy who's sitting on his ass in a beautiful place in the right. country saying he's got no, no regrets. But, uh, what kind of regrets can I have with a life like this? No, I agree, but, you, but you've also accomplished a lot. I mean, when you look back on your life, you can say, like, when you go to the newsroom now, you don't, let's say, you're not sad that you're not running the place because for so many years you did it. I mean, you really accomplished as yeah, much as I'm anyone not, could accomplish. I don't worry about that. Uh, I'm sad that uh, I'm not, uh, I had polio when I was 13 or 14 years old, and that, that uh, uh, cut short what I've often thought was a brilliant uh, athletic career would be. I mean, I played good tennis, I played good golf, I played... Uh, you know, I played all all sports, and 
I don't play any sports. Now, I mean, I play with, if you're young enough, I'll play tennis with you, and uh, I'll go to the golfing range and, and uh, you know, buy a couple of pails and balls and, and hit them. I uh, haven't done that yet this summer, but I'm going to. I love, I love athletics. I love to watch athletics. I used to love to play them, but I don't play anymore. Well, you don't need to play anymore. But no. What, I, read, I read something that you said in an interview uh, recently about luck and choices. Lucky when, choices? Well, you said, you said some, many people attribute certain kinds of lives, and you say that you're a lucky person, to luck. And oftentimes, luck is a matter of making the right choices. And I think you were referring in that to your choice to go work at the Washington Post when you did. But it wasn't a bad choice. No, it was an extremely good choice, obviously. But yeah. I, what, what appealed to me about that remark was so many people make bad choices. And then they say, I've had terrible luck. Yeah, but you make these choices almost always without, without a complete knowledge of what... I mean, I, I made the, the, when uh, Catherine Graham came to, uh, to me and said, would you like to come back to the Post? I was at Newsweek then, and I did. I didn't know Catherine Graham very well, I was, and I was scared of her. I mean, she was this grand dame in uh, Washington, and I had no idea what she'd be like as a pal. And she was an extraordinary friend, and funny, and, and uh, I can't imagine living the life I've led, or anything like it, without her. But uh, no monkey business, no, no, you know, no relationships that is, uh, have to be hidden. And, uh, but... Uh, but you also did your job very well. I mean, so that's the thing well, about, you know, you, you make a choice and then you have to deliver. I mean... You yeah, you, can, you can't muck it up, but, uh, but, but that's, that's kind of a given. If I had not made good choices and hadn't done a very good job, you wouldn't be here. Well, I might, but under no, different I, circumstances. Well, just to see, <laughs> I mean, I don't think I'd be a great... I might garden. not be a great garden. <laughs> <laughs> You've made really bad choices, we may not be yeah, a great garden. Okay. <laughs> What do you think are some of the bad, if you can look back on just things you've seen in life, what do you think are some of the poor choices people make so they, they can't look back and say... Well, I think it is the job choice. I think sometimes people, you know, they decide at the, in, in the... See, I, I didn't get to the decision-making process until after World War II. I'd been in the, I was in the Navy for three and a half years, so I, I didn't even look for a job until I was 24. I mean, I looked at a job when I was 50, for a job when I was 15, but uh, then, uh, by then you, you ought to have a certain confidence in your decision. And uh, <clears throat> I ran into a bunch of guys who were starting a newspaper in New Hampshire. Um, and it was a small paper, I think there were six reporters, and I knew the editor, and I knew the owner, and I said, what a deal this is going to be. And I worked uh, every day for, every day, including nights, uh, until, you know, for the first year. And then uh, we won a couple of prizes, and then we went broke. So I said, <clears throat> I started out then, I guess I was 26 or something, looking for a job, and I found job at the Washington Post. And actually, I mean, this is boring, but I was, I had a, a, I'd written two letters. It turned out both to the wrong people. One was the, they were both editors. One of them was editor of the editorial page of the uh, Baltimore Sun. And I couldn't write an editorial, you know, if I was the best day I ever had. And so I just uh, didn't get off the train at Baltimore. Got to Washington, uh, went down there, and somebody had been fired the day before, or quit. I don't think fired. I quit. And um, the, the editor that I'd had up in New Hampshire knew the managing editor, and, and you know, blah, blah, and blah. And you got the job. And I got the job. The first day. First question I asked. And history was made. Not quite then. Let me ask you a question, another question. If you, what are the, what would you say are the, Three best choices Ben Bradley's made in his life. Okay, we got the one, going to work for the Washington Post. Uh, yeah, but I mean, I, 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 uh, I chose awful well 
uh, mother and father. They were nice people, and they uh, uh, they handled adversity very well. Uh, my mother came from kind of a, a snotty family in, uh, in uh, New York, and when the Depression came, she went to work in a dress shop in uh, Boston. And my dad was, uh, uh, I say, uh, was vice president of some goddamn bank. And he lost his job, and he was, uh, uh, you know, demonstrating commercial deodorants in a railroad train. And not, not, nobody there is scared of hard work. But they gave you good values. Yeah, they did. And, my, and then my mom went to work, and uh, it was just a... Uh, well, you were lucky with good parents, because you didn't actually choose boy, them. You didn't like it. Boy. That's luck. See, parents are luck. Yeah. Parents aren't a choice. I, I don't know. My little kid believes you actually, there's a place called Babyville, and you choose your parents. Maybe you believe in that, too. But she, yeah. but I think parents are luck. That's sort of like, we don't have a lot of control over that. Oh, I agree with that. You know, that's like luck of the draw. Yeah. I didn't luck out in that department. But... And, and you married a wonderful woman, and... I, I've married, I, I've married more than one, I've, I've been married three times. Uh, they, uh, my previous wife, one of my first wife just uh, moved on, moved upstairs, was a great person, so was my second, and my third. Uh, uh, Sally and I have been married for 30 some years, and it's fantastic. 20 years younger than I am. You think that's helped keep you young? Well, it sure doesn't make me old. Yeah, yeah I mean, to, to marry a really good-looking lady who's 20 years younger than you keeps you on your toes. You said something very touching the other night at dinner, because it's not all about beautiful gardens and looking great and having... You said when you live to be... You said to me at dinner, when you live as long as I have, you tend to lose most of your friends. You, they die. They, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Not like you walk away because you're a terrible person. No, but but yeah. you're, you 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 end up bearing a lot of. You've got to make new friends. You're going to make new friends, and that's a secret. So you've just gone out and made yeah. new younger friends. Yeah, it, I mean, you don't set out on a trip to do it, but you, if you don't make friends who are younger, uh, you know, you're going to be like those guys in the corner of a living room in a men's club who just sit there and reminisce about uh, junk. Well, I mean, you, I, I'm, I, I'm just beyond impressed with you, and I... Well, you're also a child. Well, I'm not quite a child, but, but you know, you're better looking than Jason Robards. <laughs> and I, I think, I, I want to wish you a happy birthday, Ben, and I oh, want all my so readers, nice. I mean, 90 years old, Ben Bradley, look, these abs, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, a 50-year-old, 40-year-old would kill for, Ben, happy birthday, and... You know, thank you for being who you've been to this country for all these years. Because you've oh, made no, you've made it. You've you've done a lot. You when history is written, you will be a big part of it. That's bless you. you, really. That's so nice. Well, bless you, and, and I will come back when you're a hundred, and we'll do this again. And you'll probably look just as great. <laughs> I'll be done. No, you won't. <laughs>